There's certain animals I just hate for no reason. Like, they didn't do nothing to me. I don't like horses, they're weird. Horses are just, yes, buckle up. Just because you said that, I'm about to kill five horses in this joke. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, do you have a horse? Okay, I wasn't asking you. <laughs> I was asking Horse Girl Senior before we got to My Little Pony page. Do you both have horses or you share a horse? It's hers. So you don't have a horse, you lying bitch. All right, it's yours. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pay hey, $28 for me to call you a bitch. I'm sorry. This wouldn't happen if you just were quiet. Welcome to Comedy Planet. On today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at stand-up comedian Troy Bond, who's been blowing up all over social media lately. Short backstory on the guy. Troy is originally from Connecticut and is the son of karate grandmaster and pro wrestler Troy Bond Sr. and nurse Michelle Bond. He has one little brother. He began seriously crafting jokes at the age of 16, driven by his aspiration to become a comedian. A pivotal shift occurred during the summer before his final year in high school when he unexpectedly participated in an impromptu interview from the crowd on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. This seemingly inconsequential video swiftly spread across the internet, instilling in him the self-assurance to make a bold decision. On the day of his high school graduation, he bravely packed his belongings and relocated to New York City, propelling his career to new heights. With his slightly awkward yet aggressive style of crowd work stand-up, he is really making a big name for himself. Today we'll be taking a look at some of my favorite Troy Bond moments. I really hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. I'm sorry, I love it. Martha, I love you. Stuart, my favorite. Paige! You gotta tell me about this horse. How old is the horse? 13. How, how, how long do horses live? They're like 20. All right. I have a 22-year-old horse. Okay, wow, this whole table just... just loves to talk. Someone's gonna be like, I got a horse in 66. He fought in the Civil War. For the South. Holla! If it was up to my horse, your dad would be in jail right now. How old is your horse? Still alive. horses live very long. What happened? He got shot in the face. That horse had a horrible gambling problem. He was in with the wrong crowd. He was betting on the own races he was racing in. He was like, listen, uh, you passed through payment here. I never heard that from a horse. He got shot in the face. Was it a case of mistaken identity? What happened? Who shot your horse in the face? Was it another horse? It was the hunters. Yeah, it was, they were, they, it was like a straight bullet. It was a freaking... Well, I'm glad you were able to just bring the energy up at this room. I, I, <laughs> you should have just said, yes, another horse shot my horse in the face. Let's laugh so we could rip about that. Instead, no, my childhood pet got killed by a drunk dude with a sniper rifle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, he's still alive? <laughs> Your horse got shot in the face and he's still living? Your horse is the 50 cent of horses. <laughs> it's like, find me in the club. <laughs> Pocket full of oats. That's the most gangster shit ever. I've never heard of a horse having ops. You get shot in the face just walking out of the vet, be like, yeah, then you know they wasn't gonna kill your boy. <laughs> gonna be. Got hit me more than one bullet to send my ass to the glue factory. <laughs> Fuck y'all, Elmer. <laughs> I've been doing comedy for so long. I've had so many weird interactions. No one's ever told me, A, their horse got shot in the face. <laughs> and then B, he survived it. That's such a happy ending to the story. What's your horse's name? Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the bullet didn't kill him. You can't see where he came. Can't find me a motherfucking shadow. <laughs> Paige, what's your horse's name? 
Tech, has he been shot? <laughs> He's already not as cool as Shadow, but I'll take it. Your horse is 13, has not been shot yet. How long have you had the horse? I know why I said, yeah, like this horse lives in South Philly. <laughs> Man, just wait, he's gonna be walking down the wrong alley one day at 3 a.m. Shot twice for his Venmo money. <laughs> how, how long have you had your horse, Paige? Three years. Three years, what, was it a birthday present? No, I don't own him. He, I leased him, I, bought, I paid money so I could ride him. And sit on him. I'm glad he's not here to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I lease him so I can sit on him and ride him. You're gonna make a man very happy one day, Paige. <laughs> Make sure he leases you so you can sit on him and ride him. No such thing as a free dinner and you gotta let him know that. Just don't fuck your horse. I'm sorry I said that in front of your mom and the other horse therapists. Sex positive, unless it comes to fucking a horse. I'm not positive for that shit at all, Paige. I do not want you fucking any animals. Not horses, not pigs. If old man Donald has a farm, you better run the opposite direction, Paige. I don't want you waist deep in any livestock. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please, when I go home, when you go home, tell Tech I said he knows what he means. <laughs> let 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 him let let Tech know that he's got to get shot in the face. A little bit of credit, and let Sh Shadow know he got hit us out here. <laughs> Mom, thank you for raising this whole group of Red Dead Redemption characters. <laughs> but I still don't fuck with horses. Hilarious coincidence that a crowd member had that crazy story about their horse. He really managed to work that bit to an amazing set. This next clip we have coming up starts off pretty normal, but soon escalates very dramatically. Make sure you watch this. Oh, thank you! This is way better than the last show I just did. They were all pieces of shit. That's how it was. Sometimes you don't get a good crowd. Sometimes... You get a good crowd. <laughs> They're not great, this is good. <laughs> like this crowd feels, feels great, but it's, it's gonna get good soon. <laughs> I feel like I'm one bad joke away from this feeling like a, like a public pool. <laughs> That's no one's first choice to swim, but it's a pool. <laughs> I'm gonna be the band-aid you swim away from. This is gonna be a fun night. Look at this room tonight. Look how we're all together in this room getting a new COVID variant. <laughs> Don't you feel closer together knowing? Because comedy brings people together. That's why I think politicians should be forced to do stand-up. If any politician did stand up in history, they could have avoided controversy. I voted for Joe Biden, but that shit didn't feel great. <laughs> Felt like I was giving grandpa the keys to the Oldsmobile <laughs> and telling him to drive to California. <laughs> that was the best of a bad situation. I give credit where credit is due. I'm probably the most pro anti-Trump comic out there. That no, mother. You're not funny. Shut the no. fuck up! No, shut the fuck up. As a white guy trying to talk to black people. I'm no, not. Bitch. No, you're not. Yes, I wasn't. No, you were. You just you tuned were in. You were trying to. Well, I, you were trying to. For what? What are you upset about? It's not me. No, and shut up. Any black person that tried to laugh at his fucking jokes, no. Stop having fun, motherfuckers! <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Stop having fun. Can we get her an Adder water or something? Wow. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's what happens. Black, no, you're white listen, trying listen, to like listen. talk about. No, and you. My probation officer is here now. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you're mad at, but it's not me. No, a white person trying to make fun of black people. See, now you're crying, and we, I was just trying to make you laugh. No, don't do that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now I'm gonna make fun. I was trying to be no, empathetic. It wasn't funny. It was not. No. I don't care. You trying to like laugh at that shit. That's How funny. dare I at a comedy clip? She came here for a TED talk. Everybody knows you go to the basement for political opinion. I don't even know what he's saying, but it's just shit sounds tense. You a bitch. 
No. <laughs> Why do you think I'm doing this for a living? You think I was a football player? I'm a bitch, god damn it. <laughs> There's nothing you can say to me I haven't said six inches from the mirror. You're the first name going in my suicide note tonight. <laughs> Have a good night, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Now's the time I need you on my side. No, no, that was the most racist joke ever. No, no. I, I, I got no. like four more in the chamber. No. <laughs> no, Kamala Harris. Wait, don't serious? drop the scarf, man. That was. Three dollars at Dollar Tree, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, go pick up the gun she left under the chair. Are you serious? No, y'all wanna laugh about I'm so horny for no reason right now. Don't bully me, I'll come, bitch. Okay, wait, hold on. Focus, 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 focus. Before I do my, my last joke. Can I ask you a question? What part was I being racist at? I didn't even get to my Jim Crow jokes yet. I got blackface over here in the trunk. I was ready. Why the fuck are you recording? Put your goddamn phone down and sit. Can I ask you a question? No idea. Was I being racist? It was cupcake. No idea. It was what? It was cupcake. Cupcake? Yeah. No. What, what, the dog? That's what she was upset about? It took her 15 minutes to be that mad? It was, I don't, I feel like we're processing it at the same time. I don't know, this motherfucker would be my attorney this whole show. I feel like I've seen you in Los Santos Customs and Grand Theft Auto, dog. He's like, listen, we'll get this paint job, but first, I don't know what she's mad about. It's not you. Thank you. Put your goddamn phone down. You know I can still see you, right? Just put it down. Look at me. Put your phone down. Look at me. Put it down. You can raise it up in three minutes when I'm not paying attention, but I'm still going to get through this last joke. She wasn't going to like that last joke either, I'll be honest with you. I just don't, like, my dad is black and my mom is white and I came out a Dominican lesbian, you know, like. <laughs> I didn't even do any of my black and white material. <laughs> and she just looked at me and went, this motherfucker needs to pay reparations <laughs> for his Joe Biden joke. <laughs> In conclusion. <laughs> Everybody tonight is gonna get, if you look under your seats, you get a free five milligrams of Xanax. And he strikes once again. He really handed it to that crazy Karen. The next clip we're gonna watch is an amazing act of tying everything that the crowd throws at him together to finally hit them with an idea of a really shady business plan. Stick around for this one. Man, yeah, is there any other people? All right, welcome. You guys are in the bed. You want us to see to the union? Come on up front, man. We got seats for you. My man needs friends. He's part of the Ted Cruz fan club. Welcome, brother. What's your name, man? I'm sorry. Car Carlil. Damn, that just got me wet for some reason. Carlil. The way you said that, too, you paused and very white in it, Carlil. What do you do uh, for work down in Texas, Carlil? National Research Specialist, so I travel around with the property. A national leasing specialist. So you travel around with property management. What do you do as a leasing specialist? Just kick a bunch of broke people out of the house. <laughs> Hole in the sheetrock, that's it, you're out. No deposit. I help properties with their marketing and social media. I trust you so much, Carla. I don't know why. You sound like an angel, man. <laughs> I don't even have a mortgage, but I would give it all up to Carlil because I know he would put it in the right hands of the property and leasing managers and everyone else. Yeah, fuck that, Carlil. No, I mean, so what do you want? You're, you're on vacation here in New York? Uh, I'm actually working in uh, Hartford, but I drove down. Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, that's where I was. Yeah, we got uh, Connecticut comes in the house. Yeah, baby. And we started the opioid crisis. I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> You put Carlil in the work. All those people's houses, gone. They died of a heroin overdose. So Carlil steps in and makes sure the transfer of property goes over to the right mountain to beneficiaries. 
So, well, Hartford, Connecticut, you, and you're, you're, you're staying here or you're staying in Connecticut? I'm, I'm going to stay here for the night, but I'm not working. Staying here for tonight. You got a girlfriend, Carlos? No, no, sorry. All right, where are the single women at tonight? Because Carlos not staying here alone, goddammit. This man, I know, has a pension. Some of you are here tonight on a Groupon. Carlos, don't got to worry about that. Wait, hold on, wait, are there any single ladies in here tonight? Where are the single men? Make some noise. Valentine's Day. Wait, right here in the back, miss. You raise your hand, you squealed, you saw Carlo, you got jungle fever, I love it. It's Black History Month, you gotta do your part. The black squares on Instagram didn't cut it. You gotta Venmo him $400 and suck his dick. That's called reparations, miss. Don't make me call Dr. Umar. What's your, what's your name, miss? Anna. Well, uh, Anna, where are you from, Anna? Long Island. Long Island. Oh, perfect. This is the perfect guy you want to date if you want to piss your parents off. Right here, it's Carlo. <laughs> Anna, what do you do? What do you do? do you, what do you do for a living, Anna? Consulting. Consulting. Who, who do you consult? <laughs> Carlo gave me his whole backstory. I'm pretty sure I heard four digits of his social security number. You gotta give me more to work with. I know every district this man is working in. He is OSHA certified. <laughs> what, like a, a consultant? Who do you consult? Uh, pharma companies, they help them figure out how to make their Hook up on the drugs, dog, right there. You can go back to Hartford, start dipping out Oxycontin to all these white people, and then boom, more houses for Carlillo Flip, baby. Got one of these to sign. You can secure in the bag and secure in the bag. You know what I mean? It's working out. I love the reaction to that reparations joke. You can really tell the people there weren't sure if they were allowed to laugh or not for that one. This next one surrounds around a bunch of hecklers just yelling out nonsense, but Troy isn't having none of it. He completely shuts these fools up, while winning the rest of the crowd over as he does it. Check it out. I didn't know what to do, I just started improvising. I was like, dude, can you please shut the fuck up? Yeah. Just shut the fuck up. This feels like the homeless shelter show, I'm not gonna lie. This feels just as hostile, and I know there's some dirty needles in here. You got it. Thank you. That was a weird thing to clap for, dog. I, you were clapping for you, you were trying to get a clap going, and it didn't work at all. The pigeons, well. What is your problem? What, were you touched too much or not enough? I don't know what the fuck your problem is. But you just keep shouting out. I'm giving you the attention you want now. Your parents should have left you in the forest. They found you and you thin-lipped hat. Be quiet. What do you want? What did you say no to? Was that homeless crackhead talking to pigeons a friend of yours? You kind of remind me of a bird, the way you won't stop chirping. Will you focus on me? Look, nobody's on your side here. I am. I want to entertain you. You were just a raging pitch, and you won't stop talking. You got a little smile on that one. You got a little kink shame, don't you, slut? I like it. This is fun. Dude, I can't even understand what you're saying. That's what's bothering me. Can you turn on the subtitles or talk quieter, please? Boris, just shut the fuck up. I don't even know which one he was talking because it's dark, but like, I'm, 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 I'm upset. Okay, well, you are a horrible friend, sir, and a bad snitch, and you would never make it in Nazi Germany, you fucking... You just said that boy. That fucking lad. I'm catching like every fourth word, and so is everybody else. Are you Irish? Yeah, that was good. See, they're not even drunk. This is just normal Irish people. The fucking lads are here. It's gonna be 1917. Oh, what Seamus, I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit my wife. I'm gonna fucking do it, lads. I'm gonna fucking deck her, the fucking stupid bird. I'm gonna fucking hit her in the darker. Oh my God, Did someone just have an orgasm? That didn't sound Irish at all. You sounded like an orphan from the 20s. Oh my God, extra, extra. I'm coming right now, boys. It's coming in hot and it's coming fast. Yeah, see? Semen in the pants. That was the gayest noise I've ever heard in my whole life. Are you gay or Irish? You could be one or the other. The church is very clear about this. 
<laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You don't have to be sure yet. I, it makes a lot of sense why you're being so disruptive now. He's like, I don't know if I want to suck a cock or, or love the Lord, but I, the longer he yells at me, the less I have to take about it. They're after me lucky charms, boys. They're gonna fucking take them. Like my uncle took my innocence on the seventh communion. He took me into the stall. I thought I was gonna see the Lord of the Light and all I saw was his cock in my mouth. I called it a Sinead O'Cocker. Nothing compares to the trauma of that day, boys. I didn't hear that part. Wait, what did you say? Okay, alright, listen. Nobody's on your side here, alright? I'm trying to help the show move along. I'm trying to help the people who aren't raging pricks enjoy a good time. Good, I'm, they're making me homophobic, I'm not gonna lie. I'm feeling very homophobic right now. I'm gonna vote for Mike Pence for president in 2024. I'm honestly gonna see if I can do it right now. Because I like the whole immigration, don't let people from out of the country into the country part. I really like that right now. Okay, I'm gonna go back to... What is your problem? I don't know if you're booing me or booing him. I think they were booing you, boss. It's okay, listen, listen. Everyone has a different disability. And it's not a disability, it's just a different ability. My goodness, he let those people have it. Really unleashed all he had on them. In the next clip, Troy goes off the rails and just keeps coming up with joke after joke after joke off the top of his head. Serious impromptu skills. Watch this and see for yourself. And then, uh, w and nobody here is visiting from out of town. We get anybody from out of town? Make some noise. From out of town, is that? Where you? Oh, welcome. Welcome. Where are you, where are you from uh, in the back? Seattle. Seattle, man. Of more depressed people. I love it. Welcome, Seattle. This one's for you, Fraser. Did you come just for, did you come to support a friend or you just waltzed into this show tonight? Waltzed. You waltzed in. Well, welcome to our Scientology meeting. <laughs> Everybody will be required to name three secrets about themselves. So how long have you been in the closet, sir? <laughs> no straight man comes from Seattle. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Welcome, welcome. Who are you here with tonight? What? Who are you here with tonight? The Chuckleheads. The Chuckleheads. Were you, a bad guy from the 40s? <laughs> Yeah, look at these chuckleheads. Gonna have them spinning out of here like a Bill Withers 45. Ah, see? Put your hands where I can see them, chucklehead. All your dogs ain't tied to the same tree. Around here from Seattle, we like people with no chuckles on their heads. Let me tell you something, friends. <laughs> Welcome, chuckleheads. It sounds like a slur the more I say it. You see these fucking chuckleheads coming in our neighborhood? Our fucking neighborhood? Welcome, good to have you. Who else was visiting? We got anybody else visiting? Where are you from over here? Where, where, where are you guys from? San Diego. San Diego, cool. Well, you said, boring. Uh, <laughs> where are you from over here, sir? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, oh shit, welcome, man. Good to have you here. So, the Bronx, got it, cool. Good to have you here. <laughs> welcome. Okay, you took the six train all the way from Puerto Rico. <laughs> the man is untouchable. How he comes up with it all on the spot really amazes me. In this next one, he slowly realizes that he's talking to a Mormon couple, and let's just say the other crowd members have some weird things to say about it all. Here you go. Welcome back, miss. We'll just talk about our suicidal thoughts. Do you have any? <laughs> You've never thought about killing yourself. Yeah. That's good. I'm not shaming you, right? No. I'm a white woman in America. Why would I? <laughs> Everything is literally perfect for me. Welcome. I'm sorry. You, all you did was pee, and that's the shit I'm doing. Are you here with uh, these with these fine people over here? No, no. With your husband. Beautiful couple. A lot of missionaries. <laughs> missionaries are great, dude. I love missionaries. We face each other so we can argue. Doggy, that's when you know you're in trouble. When every position is doggy. It's like you take your dick out, face the wall. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Christian Comedy Night, by the way. I appreciate it. You look like you met when you were a youth pastor and wait for her to turn 18. How did you meet? Right at college. At college. Both in college. 
What college? Uh, BYU. BYU? That doesn't sound real. I feel like you just insulted me in second grade. BYU? Where is that? Pennsylvania? Damn. So close. What part of Utah? Pro, that's where the P comes from. Yeah. Got it. We, somebody's cracking themselves up back then. <laughs> Are you surprised that I heard that? Where are you laughing at? I'll be real. It's because I'm shocked that they met at college. Cause like, don't y'all sign contracts that y'all can't fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that you know that. It's weird that nobody was talking to you and then you volunteered that information. It's like when dudes are like, hey man, the age of consent in Alabama is 14. How the fuck do you know that? That's not the flex you think it is. It's like, I know, I signed it, I violated it, now I'm in jail, dog. I can't live nowhere near school. You see me on TV to catch a predator season 12. That's right, I was the one who showed up and continued to eat the pizza. <laughs> Wait, I wanna know, how do you know about that? that, that there's a, I didn't, well, first of all, I didn't even know there was a contract that said you had to sign it and say you're not gonna fuck. Why is that? It's not a contract, okay. I feel like we're all on an episode of Better Call Saul right now. This is fantastic. Your Honor, my client has no bitches, if I'd like to start the back for a few minutes. He's not fucking without pen and paper, baby. Tell me what it is, break it down. I'm a Jets fan. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time I ask this man a question, I get 12 more questions. I was like, how do you know about the legality of fucking on college campuses? First of all, I'm from Mars, motherfucker. Starts in September 1962. A Tuesday! I just told you to press Denver to credit, sir. Okay, you're a Jets fan, so you know how to get fucked. That's first off. Don't say we, you did not. You were not part of that decision making process at all. They were not up before draft day. We gotta figure out what this statutory rapist thinks before we draft it. Make sure the paperwork is right. Okay, wait, so they, I'm guessing they drafted somebody that broke the fuck contract. <laughs> you could've just said that. <laughs> they fuck the draft contract, and you said... They, they broke it too. Yes. Now we're all going to hell. <laughs> what did the contract say? Do you know? I've <laughs> been trying to get answers for 12 minutes. As soon as we get to the root of it, he's like, what, you think I got fucking answers? What is the contract? See, aren't you upset that you peed when you did? This all could have been avoided. How, what does the contract say? What is, what is, is it a contract or is it more or less like an agreement? What it, yeah, it's, it's more of like, like a, it's an honor code. An honor code. Yeah, like, and it hey, says, here, you better not be coming anywhere else. <laughs> Now that guy from the crowd would have been better off just staying quiet. Some funny call-outs from Troy's part. This next one starts off with a prediction from Troy that immediately backfires. But of course he manages to turn it into a hilarious bit. Stick around for the whole set. It just gets better and better. You look like your dad might be a racist cop. <laughs> That's what I said. Is this your dad? Oh, no, sorry. My bad, bad. No. You don't look like a cop at all. What do you do for a living? You're a doctor. What kind of doctor? Neurologist. Would you, would you move for neurologist? Okay, yeah. Okay. This is a married man. Who is also a racist cop. What's the worst part about being a neurologist? You just keep saying words I don't know. What's the worst part? Fibromyalgia, mitochondria. I did my residency on Tatooine. What is fibromyalgia? 
a pain condition that's difficult to treat. It sounds like it was difficult for you to say that sentence. <laughs> Do you have fibromyalgia? <laughs> such a horrible disease for such a fun word to say. <laughs> I'm gonna say that the next time I come. Fibromyalgia. <laughs> I'm not even gonna swear anymore. I'm just gonna be like, oh, fibromyalgia! <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Because I'm not, I'm not on top of it. What does a neurologist do? <laughs> oh, like head stuff. Neurology. <laughs> I didn't go to med school like you, dog. Sorry. <laughs> so fibromyalgia impacts the head? The body which is connected to the head. <laughs> knee bone connected to the hip bone type of situation. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and blood. Head, shoulders. What do you do, mom? Uh, Nurse, what, what uh, RN, CNA, LPN? ICU, CART, damn. Of course, you get the three letters I didn't name out. <laughs> it's like CNA, LPN, ICU. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. That had to have been rough the last couple of years in the hospitals, right? Yeah. You looked at me for a second like, what, what, what happened? <laughs> COVID, you, you ever like, you be in the hospital, somebody has COVID and you just like, why don't you just take the pillow? <laughs> <laughs> You're not vaccinated and you stormed the Capitol. I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> My mom's a nurse too, man. I don't know why I said that, like you know her. <laughs> and are, are, what, what are you doing with your life? You got a doctor and nurse and you just fucking sitting here while they're paying for shit. <laughs> what are you, what are you, what, you're, in, you're in school? Yeah. High, uh, college, high school? <laughs> oh shit, sorry. <laughs> Well, you'll see me on To Catch a Predator next time. <laughs> the rest of the show, just don't make eye contact with me. <laughs> oh man, this guy has no limits. Anything is game for him. This next clip is the follow-up from the crazy Karen one that came up earlier. Who would have known this man could do impressions too? But here's the thing about Trump. You can always tell when he's about to go off script because he sees a word he doesn't know how to pronounce. <laughs> and he acts like the word he's fucking up is a new word he's teaching us. <laughs> and I learned it when he gave that press conference on Iran. Because what Trump does is he just starts going off script right before he's about to fuck up a word. But he, he keeps it presidential. But he does, he's still very Trumpy about it. I remember he was just like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> the United States has commissioned a drone strike, drones. <laughs> They're bing bong, bing bong boom, drones, drones. <laughs> we did it with a Death Star, could you believe that? We did it with a Death Star. <laughs> and we built the Death Star, could you believe it? They said we couldn't build the Death Star, we did it. We got the rebels to pay. They paid for the death star. <laughs> they said we couldn't do it. We did it. We did it. Yoda. You know this guy, Yoda? Yoda. Little guy called Little Yoda. That's this guy. Born in Kenya. Could you believe it, Yoda? <laughs> also, Luke Skywalker. You know this guy? He's gay. He's gay. Luke is gay. <laughs> I saw him fighting his father, Darth Vader, black guy, born in Kenya. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, United States Commissioner Drone Strike, in which we killed <laughs> this guy, you know this guy, from Iran, from Iran. You know, <laughs> That's okay, could be good, could be bad. Wasn't good for him, wasn't good. 
Wasn't good. Wasn't good. I ran. You have to work. <laughs> he was an Iranian general, this guy. Iranian. His name. <laughs> of the night a flicker starts to glow a beacon in the shadows a light that starts to flow illuminating pathways where once there was despair in the depths of obscurity hope begins to flare like a flame in the wind i ignite from within casting rays of brilliance banishing the din with each step i take i brighten up the way in the realm of shadows, I become the day. I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light. Through the tunnels of uncertainty, I'll be the guide. For I am the bearer of hope in me, dreams reside. In the labyrinth of life, where shadows dance and play. I'm the ray of sunshine, turning night into day. With every glimmer I cast, I unveil the unseen. In the tapestry of existence, I'm the golden sheen. From the darkest corners to the highest peak, I'm the radiant glow that even shadows seek. With every flicker, every beam I emit, I dispel the darkness, I never submit. I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light Through the tunnels of uncertainty, I'll be the guide For I am the bearer of hope in me, dreams reside In the symphony of life, I'm the crescendo's rise In the canvas of the universe, I paint the skies So let the darkness tremble, let the shadows flee For in the heart of radiance, I'll always be I'm the light in the darkness, the spark in the night. Guiding lost souls towards the morning light. Jafar, we killed Jafar. <laughs> Luke Skywalker's day and both Yoda and Darth Vader are from Kenya? Whatever you say, Troy. The next clip is going to be the last one. Now a quick pro tip. Never have a full-blown phone call during a Troy Bond show, because he's going to let everybody know that you suck if you do. Enjoy. But this woman is on her phone right now. This is incredible. Well, I mean, there's no, you gotta find out the chlamydia results as soon as you can, I guess. <laughs> I can smell it from here. Yes, yes, doctor, yes, no. So you're saying I can't have sex tomorrow? Doesn't matter if it's my uncle or not? No, this isn't the first time. Yes, yes, I love Game of Thrones. Why do you ask? <laughs> yes, of course. Will my Oxycontin prescription be ready? Will it be ready if I come in with a gun tomorrow? <laughs> yes, I thought so, doctor. No, I'm, I can talk, I'm just at a comedy show. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't matter, I have no class. <laughs> That's how I got committee, I was fucking in a public bathroom. I'll be honest, I wasn't even fucking, I just put my vagina right on the hand dryer and let it go. <laughs> so it wasn't chlamydia, it's just a bunch of shit follicles in my vagina right now. You're also saying I have a problem with situational awareness? Oh, it's just autism. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So is this covered by my Obamacare? I don't have Obamacare. I'm not even talking to anybody right now. I am schizophrenic, okay. But I don't have chlamydia. I do have chlamydia, ah, shit. Well, as long as I'm not schizophrenic. Still not picking it up. Is she speak English? You just talk it, it's like watching Anne Frank on a phone. <laughs> Yes, I'm at a comedy show. Please help me. This man in Times Square came up to me and asked if I wanted to go to a basement. And I said, yes. I'm afraid I'm going to be human trafficked again. This will be the second time this week. I was lucky to get out of there alive the first time. I think that's how I got chlamydia. I tripped and fell on a rusty screw. Anyway, please send help. 
my exact address. Oh, don't say my address. That's how I'll get traffic again. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I will just uh, share my location with everybody on Twitter. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I gotta go, but I'm gonna talk for like 20 more minutes. How's mom? <laughs> Still dead? Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Good. That bitch needs to stay in the ground. <laughs> yeah, the guy I'm with is not paying attention to me at all. Yeah, he's looking at the really good looking guy on stage. Yeah, he's like dressed in all black. Kind of looks like if Adam Driver had a baby with Pete Davidson. I would fuck that baby, because I also have chlamydia and I'm a pedophile. I'm gonna just keep defaming her character until she looks at me. She didn't laugh at any of my previous jokes, that's why I'm going so hard at her right now. Hello, yes, is this a dumb bitch hotline? Hi, yeah, Stacy again. I just want to say, I, 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 this door says pull and I'm pushing, but nothing's happening. Could you please send AAA? They're not coming out anymore? Okay. Who? <laughs> I can't believe I'm going this long. There's so many. <laughs> I'm sober too. This is just mental illness, baby. <laughs> Miss. Oh, now you hang up the phone. Hi, Troy Bond. How you doing? What happened? That is a great question. What's your name? No, the other person who was talking on the phone. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. No, 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 like 7.30. No, 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 I'll be here till uh, next Friday, then I'm going to Rhode Island. I feel like I'm talking to a Muppet. My name is This is the best set of my life. What was that poor lady even saying? Well, I guess we'll never know because that's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. If you have any opinions, drop a comment and let me know and I'll do my best to read and respond to it. Everything is welcome. With that said, till next time. Peace.